It's very important that older adults exercise because it is the best demonstrated way to maintain good health, fitness, and independence. It maintains capacity based on strength, on aerobic activity, defends against a lot of diseases, and in many ways is the best prescription we have for healthy and successful aging. Different aspects of physical functioning are important and equally important. Upper body strength involves a number of muscle groups, arms, shoulders, back, chest, neck, and there are isolating exercises for each of them. Lower body strength uh, involves exercises for leg against. There are, ex there are exercises that work the opposing muscles of the upper leg, lower leg, uh, builds up resistance for walking, for hiking, for sports, as well as climbing stairs and the common necessary activities of independent living. Endurance and cardiovascular fitness is important to allow one to have the endurance to carry out any of these activities. There are many variations, many choices for aerobic exercise. Uh, I use an exercise bike, an ergometer, that allows one to adjust the resistance as well as the speed of activity. Using a treadmill for a walking or running activity as well as many variations of that are equally valid. Exercise is important. Lots of research shows that it is important and works best for health. A lot of strong evidence showing that for adults, including older adults, that the regular activity, and that includes aerobic exercise as well as strength training and balance, uh, improve quality of life, also extend life, decrease risk of cardiovascular disease and many other illnesses and disabilities. It is uh, about 15 years since the last time that we filmed a similar story down here. And over that time, my exercise uh, has changed very little, actually. Minor variations, but overall the same body parts, uh, similar levels of activity. And, and perhaps what this speaks to is the fact that if one continues with activity, does it carefully, of course, and avoids injury, that the capability of maintaining performance over many years is uh, easily achieved. Hi everybody, I'm Mandy Johnson and I'm a yoga instructor here at Central Arkansas Veterans Healthcare System. And I'd like to share, you, uh, share with you a little bit about why yoga. Why are we offering that to our veterans? It is actually mandatory for us to make sure that veterans across the United States have access to yoga. There are many benefits that have been proven scientifically from the use of yoga. Now, there are many more things that folks believe are beneficial to yoga, but today we're going to talk a little bit about scientifically proved benefits from yoga for health and wellness. Um, just a little fact about yoga is that it kind of derives from the Sanskrit word yuji, and yuji means yoke or union. Um, it's ancient practice, and it brings together the mind and the body and the soul in practice, really trying to unite and incorporate the individual and engage yourself to get comfortable and relaxed, improve that health overall through yoga. So it is a combination of breathing practice, meditation, which is just kind of that mindfulness and spending some alone time with yourself and meditating, and body um, poses. Those are the main three components. And if you study and go to school through yoga, you find out that it really ingrains a whole lot of things like just being good to other people and giving back to your community. So there's lots of limbs of yoga. But the main premise is behind the combination of breath, physical body movement, and meditation. So like I said, there's a lot of benefits both mentally and physically for yoga. Some have been proven through scientific background studies, and others are just things that people have experienced as benefits. So I want to talk about the major things that are beneficial with yoga, proven through scientific study. The first one is that it's, it has the ability to decrease stress. It has been shown through studies that the cortisol levels are decreased in the human body when you regularly practice yoga. Um, and that is the primary stress hormone, cortisol. Um, there was a three-month uh, study done on about 24 women who experienced stress by their own perception. And after completing that three-month yoga, those women showed a significant decrease in that cortisol and their stress. So the cortisol levels decreased in those women that practiced in that study, and they experienced personally the perception of their stress being lowered. So that's one big benefit that you can see from practicing yoga on a regular basis. The second one is studies have shown that yoga can actually relieve some anxiety. 
There have been several studies done. One included 34 women who experienced anxiety and they practiced yoga two times a week for two months. And this showed at the end of the study a decrease in anxiety for those women who practiced it regularly, a significant decrease. Another study that I find pretty interesting because I've done some work in post-traumatic stress disorder is 64 patients that struggled with post-traumatic stress disorder. This again was a woman, uh, female group, and they practiced yoga one time a week for 10 weeks, and that showed a decrease in symptoms of their post-traumatic stress disorder. In addition, those who um, completed the yoga for the duration showed a 52% decrease in the symptom criteria for post-traumatic stress disorder. So this is just a couple of studies that show that yoga is actually beneficial for anxiety and uh, diagnoses that may be connected to anxiety, such as post-traumatic stress disorder. Another one is that it increases heart health. It can help increase heart health and decrease several risk factors for heart disease. Um, another study that was done is for 40 year, years of age, an older group they practiced that had practiced yoga for five years. So this wasn't a short-term yoga. If you look at most of these studies, they show long-term practice or extended practice, and it's not just for a day or a week or a month, but most of them are at least two months or longer of practice. But for the heart health, it showed for those um, 40 years and older age group in this study that it decreased their blood pressure and it decreased um, other co comorbid comorbidity processes for that heart disease. So those are some things that show benefit. Another scientifically studied area of benefits of yoga is reducing inflammation so inflammation is a normal immune response, so it's not a bad thing. But when you have chronic inflammation, it can cause lots of other problems that contribute to things like heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. So there was a study done with 218 participants in yoga. And with those participants, over a long term, it showed that it, it decreased their inflammatory markers and those that did not practice any yoga, it, their markers did not decrease for whatever their control group was. So the, those who practiced yoga showed a significant amount in lower inflammatory markers when they practiced yoga. Quality of life is an additional area that has shown to be improved by the incorporation of yoga. It has for me. I notice that I'm happier, I'm more flexible, I just feel better when I practice yoga more regularly. There was a study done with 135 seniors, uh, senior citizens, and they were able to choose between a walking group, a yoga group, or a control, control group. Those that participated in the yoga group showed significant improvement in quality of life, mood, and less fatigue than those that participated in the walking and the control group. So quality of life has been proven to show improvement with the integration of yoga into daily life. Chronic pain is another area that there has been research done to show benefits of inclusion of yoga in your life. 42 individuals who had suffered from carpal tunnel syndrome got to choose between participating in yoga or participating in splinting as a after surgery um, modality for improvement and therapeutic gain of regular range of motion. Those that choose the eight, chose the eight weeks of yoga participation versus the eight weeks of splinting showed more in, positive improvement in flexibility and grip strength than the splinting group did. So it can really show better pain control. They um, complained less of pain, had better range of motion, and uh, had a better grip strength at the end of that treatment for those eight weeks. Flexibility and balance. I think that goes without saying, but what I find interesting is you will find a lot of studies about yoga around women. More and more men are finding yoga beneficial for them. It is very beneficial for men who work out a lot or have any of these problems that we're talking about today that have shown a scientific benefit from using yoga in your daily life. So that flexibility and balance. 
they did a study with 26 male college athletes for 10 weeks. And they participated in this yoga, and there was significant increase, increase for, again, this is just a male group of college athletes. They had a significant increase in several measures of flexibility and balance compared to the control group that chose not to participate in yoga. One other area is fighting depression. Now, this is also linked when we talked in the beginning about decreasing stress. A lot of these studies cross back and forth because that same um, hormone of cortisol is decreased, which is the neurotransmitter for depression. So one of the studies along the lines of that, a substance abuse alcohol group um, for alcohol dependency, and the study for two weeks, um, they used either yoga for two weeks or chose other options. The yoga that was provided to the yoga group was rhythmic, a rhythmic breathing yoga. And the, that group had a significantly higher decrease in symptoms of depression and levels of cortisol. So another interesting thing is that also the levels of ACTH had also decreased in this group, which is the hormone responsible for the release of that cortisol. Another area of a study showed some benefit for in our breathing. I think we all are familiar with the idea that breathing is very crucial to our health. We can't live without it. It's the first thing we come into this world doing, and it's the last thing we do when we go out. So there was a study done with 287 college students. They took a 15-week class, and they showed doing breathing exercises via yoga actually showed a significant increase in vital lung capacity. So being able to breathe better. There's a study that goes along with that with a benefit of promoting sleep. And those can be, kind of be found as linked when you think about that breathing and that sleep and using breathing exercises to calm yourself for bed. But there's several studies out there as well for sleep that help promote sleep health. One study um, had 69 elderly patients who could choose between um, some yoga breathing exercises or herbal preparation before bed or a control group. Those that utilized the yoga option fell asleep faster, they had better quality of sleep, and they slept longer than both of the other groups, the control group and the group that chose herbal um, prep for sleep. So that is just 10 of the areas that show benefit from yoga. There are studies out there that are looking into the benefit of yoga with migraines, and it can help in addition to other medical um, purposes like medications, but those that use yoga in unison with medications for migraines have better results. There's more and more studies in that area. A 12th area that's beneficial by science studies is also um, promoting healthy eating. It is shown that the mindfulness part of yoga tends to help people connect to the mindful eating that they, that they do. And there are more and more studies going in hand with showing that healthier eating tends to be found with those who participate in yoga. And one of the last benefits that I want to talk about is that yoga actually can in increase strength. Again, this is for male or female populations. So if you think about um, the poses and the holds on many yoga positions, you can see how it might improve strength. A study was done with um, 79 adults who performed 24 cycles of the sun salutations. We did a short video on how you can start as a beginner practicing sun salutations. It's usually a, a little practice that starts into a full yoga practice, but this study took those folks and had them do 24 cycles of the sun salutations for six out of the seven days of a week for 24 weeks. So they did that for those 24 weeks and they showed significant increase in muscle mass, muscle strength, and decrease in uh, body weight, as well as increased endurance. And for women, they actually showed a decrease in body fat as well. So yoga has so many benefits, and these are the reasons why we encourage our veterans, male, female, young, old, um, 
in a wheelchair, standing, mobile, it can fit anybody. So we just encourage you to think about what health factors you have that this may help in addition to any other medical care that you get for these things. Now, the VA has even backed that there is enough research to say that yoga has benefit for the following diagnosis. Anxiety, depression, hypertension, which kind of follows that heart disease that we covered by some studies, um, low back pain, that chronic pain that's already been identified through studies, obesity, weight, we just talked about that with overall um, exercise health and strengthening the body, and then PTSD, that stress factor that we also talked about. So there's enough research out there that the VA has mandated that it is important to offer this in conjunction with other clinical care techniques to help these um, different diagnoses and medical problems that our veterans may have. So I encourage you to come join us for our yoga classes, whether it be on YouTube or when we are able to start having classes here on campus again. Thank you for joining us today.